Hey gamers, it's me. I have this new show idea, but I don't know what to do for the first episode. I could do something about Wii Sports, or... Yeah, not, not that. A standard pilot is normally used for when the big television companies aren't completely sure if they actually want to make the show. So we don't end up with another Birds of Prey show. And here it is, the first episode machine. People often use it when they want to come up with first episodes. It's actually how they came up with the first episode of Marvel's Inhumans. If you don't know anything about Mad Cats, they make like third party controllers, just like this GameCube one. Um, it's a lot different to a regular GameCube controller, but it still gets the job done. I'm guessing this is control, like the first episode machine is controlled by this very thing. Now, what button do I press? The X button. Hey gamers, it's me. I kind of got stuck in the first episode machine and there's nothing I can really do. I guess we can talk about some stuff here. And oh my god, now I have Wii music. Because of my main channel, Here's Mario 123, I have a creator code to use in the Fortnite item store, among other things. With this, however, you get given games, sometimes before they even launch on the store. I remember the first game I got, Genesis Alpha 1. What a great game that was. Just kidding, in my own opinion, I thought the game was a bit slow for my liking and I didn't really know what I was doing in the game. The good thing, however, is that when Epic Games gives out free games, they aren't normally just for their platform. Sometimes they're for Uplay. You know, the Ubisoft that made We Dare on the Wii. Uplay is where you get the Assassin's Creed games. The thing with Assassin's Creed is now I have four games in the series that I'll probably never play. I tried out Assassin's Creed 2, which I got for free on Uplay itself, and I didn't understand what was so good about it. It felt long, boring, and there wasn't really that much to do. But I can understand why people enjoy the game. Hey gamers, it's me. I guess the uh, Mad Cat's GameCube controller isn't a very good teleporting thing. I finally got out of the first episode machine, but I guess it uh, still didn't work. So I guess we're stuck here. Oh, hey, is that the first Super Mario Brothers game? With Tetris and Nintendo World Cup? This game went on to be re-released like hell, with it getting its own deluxe port to the Game Boy Color. A lot like how all the Wii U games get a deluxe port onto the Switch. The Game Boy Color version is one of the best versions of the game, with a world map and everything. But this game has also been ported to the SNES within Super Mario All-Stars, the Game Boy Advance, the Wii, the 3DS, the Wii U, the NES Classic, and the Switch. The SNES version is just an enhanced version of the game. Removing the Minus World glitch, along with other glitches too. Now if you don't mind, we need to hook this thing back up again. I'm gonna miss this place. Really am. I'm not gonna miss wearing this jumper though. <clears throat> hey gamers, it's me. Finally, um, out of the, uh, what was it called again? The first episode machine. I can finally go back to where I wanted to be the whole time. How did that go there? Wasn't I holding it? The Marvel Cinematic Universe has 23 movies with television and comic tie-ins as well. This universe is great, but we'll leave the television shows for today as we take a look at the movies of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But we need a quick background. In the 90s, Marvel was going through some bad times, with them slowly becoming bankrupt. Known as Marvel Films from 1993 to 1996, they had to license out their characters, such as Captain America, the X-Men, Fantastic Four, and Blade. Marvel wanted to create their own movies, but they just didn't have enough money to be able to make said films. I guess I'm pretty happy that we aren't looking at the television shows, because there's one show that's just awful. Marvel's Inhumans. 
Hey gamers, it's me. Now I thought because of that Super Mario Brothers Tetris and Nintendo World Cup cartridge I managed to find, I may as well play the other games that are on the cartridge. Yeah, I'm not gonna play Nintendo World Cup. Let's play Tetris. Well, it's time to become a Tetris champion. I'm gonna try and get over 100,000 points, which according to the world records, isn't that much. The highest score anyone has ever gotten in this simple puzzle game is 900,999 points, which was done by Matthew Bucko on the NES version. That's right, there's different versions of the game. Okay, let's see if we can, we can do this. I'm gonna play the online version of the game. Yeah. Okay. Oh boy, gotta get over 100,000. See, I have played this before, so I do know all the controls. But it's just very weird how there's so many versions of this game. Oh well, I don't know where to put this one, so I'm gonna have to- I didn't even mean to do that. I've gotta be honest with ya, I did not mean to do that. Um, here, down, yep, that's good. So you can do that in this version of the game. I just know that, because I'm a pro. And then, do a bit of, got that one there, got that one there, boom, look at that. That's not even what I thought I did. How did I even, what? Excuse me? Oh boy, okay, we're gonna do that again. Hey gamers, it's me. With Avatar 2 being delayed again, I just don't know what to do anymore. And no, it's not Nintendo World Cup. I'm never gonna play Nintendo World Cup. So I guess we gotta look at the real sequel to Super Mario Brothers. Super Mario Brothers Special. There's also some new power-ups, such as the hammer from Donkey Kong, which is a pretty neat thing to add. There's also the wing, which makes Mario swim in the air. Pretty interesting, isn't it? There's also a clock, which adds 100 seconds to the timer, as well as the Hachitsuke, which is the B from the Hudson Soft logo. This item is useless though, as it's only in one level and it adds 8,000 points. That's it. The final new thing is the Lucky Star. When Mario collects the Lucky Star, all the enemies on the screen will die, and give the points that they would as if Mario had his Starman power, which is also in the game. There's nothing else really to add to this game, besides from the fact that it was only released in Japan and South Korea, and Luigi is not in the game. So yeah, guess we gotta look next time at Super Mario Bros. Lost Levels, or Super Mario Bros. 2 in Japan. Ja <sighs> Well, guess it's time to finally play Banjo Kazooie. Hey gamers, it's me. Guess I'm gonna play this game where I replay. I'm gonna play Banjo Kazooie on it. Let me go put it in the console. <laughs> All right, here we are. Just gonna chuck that in there. Okay, I'll turn it on. On. Okay, I'm ready to play. So if you don't know, this game originally came out on the Nintendo 64, but since Microsoft bought Rare, the company that made the game, yeah, it's now an Xbox game. But what's actually quite funny is in the Xbox port, they actually removed every single Nintendo reference, except for the original Game Boy that they left in the game. 
I would assume by accident, but it's there. Okay, so let's just start playing the game. Oh. Controller stops working. Maybe it's because it's uh, unplugged for some reason. I'll just try it again. Bit weird that he managed to end his way back up at Nintendo again, but it does make sense because that's where he originally came from. Nintendo. Oh, God. There's always other options. There's always other options. Like. Yeah. I'd rather not. Got anything else? Huh. Oh. Apparently they have to fix this game. But then a PlayStation Plus, that's kinda of pointless. Wouldn't like, come on, wouldn't the online be shut down by now? Isn't this just an SNES game? Connect Adventures. What? What the hell is that rating? Uh. This is a demo disc. Look behind you. I just look behind me. God, what a stupid game again. Why would I want? Why would I want to play this? It's got a note section. <laughs> I'm never playing this for it. <laughs> Let me just put it back on the shelf. Anything else? Oh, it's pointless. Pointless, pointless, pointless. Ah, uh, what's the point? Seriously? Like, ugh. What the... Oh, uh... Hey gamers, it's me. From what I remember, when I fell asleep, there weren't these... Wii games surrounding me. I used to have all my Wii games on one hard drive. This one to be exact. But now that I'm older, I actually want to own the games. So I've slowly been buying a lot of the games that I used to play again. And a few new ones. In the time where I used to pirate these games, I only owned a few actual Wii games which were Wii Sports, Big Beach Sports, Big Family Sports, Wii Fit Plus, Lego Batman, Super Mario All-Stars, Disney Universe, Shaun White Snowboarding, and Sega All-Stars Tennis. But my stupid 9 or 10 year old brain decided to trade in Wii Sports, Big Beach Sports, and Big Family games, as I already had them on the hard drive, but now older me wants those games back. So I bought them. Now let's get back to the topic at hand, the Wii games. All the Wii games I've bought are pretty good, well, except for Avatar. I haven't actually played that game. The only reason why I bought that game in the first place is a game store I went to had a 3 for 15 sale going on and I needed a third game. The first games I bought back were Mario Strikers, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, Sonic Colors, Avatar, Wii Play, Wii Sports, and Wii Sports Resort. These games are all very good, my personal favourite being New Super Mario Bros. Wii, as I used to play it all the time. Hey gamers, it's me. Five Nights at Freddy's is an incredibly popular horror franchise. There's a whole lore behind the game, but it's mainly hidden in the game. But I'm not here to make a hundred game theories about the lore of the game. I'm not MatPat. The creation of the game itself came from when Scott Cawthon's other games were getting a lot of negative reception. Scott Cawthon had accidentally created a horror game within a family-friendly game about a beaver. Now, to list all the other games, there is as follows. FNAF 2, FNAF 3, FNAF 4, FNAF World, FNAF Sister Location, FNAF Help Wanted, Freddy Fast Birds Pizza Re Simulator, Freddy in Space 2, Ultimate Custom Night, and FNAF AR Special Delivery, with two more games to come. But we can't forget about the books, which are FNAF The Silver Eyes, FNAF The Twisted Ones, FNAF The Fourth Closet, FNAF 
Fazbear Frights number one into the pit. FNAF Fazbear Frights fetch. FNAF Fazbear Frights number three, 1.35 a.m. FNAF Fazbear Frights number four, step closer. FNAF Fazbear Frights number five, a FNAF guide and a FNAF activity book. But we also can't forget the four more FNAF Fazbear Frights that haven't been released yet. And after that, Five Nights at Freddy's became the biggest horror franchise there ever was. At least in video games. Anyway, I need to go back to playing Animal Crossing New Leaf on my Nintendo 3DS. Wow! Yeah. Hello. Hey gamers, it's me. Today I'm here to talk about the very first Mario Kart game, which if you don't know was on the SNES. This game is known as Super Mario Kart, and it involves a lot of things from the game Super Mario World, also released on the SNES. But do you know a lot of the history behind the game? I think the main idea behind this game was to make it like a regular Mario game, but with cards. Which makes a lot of sense considering it's called Super Mario Kart, but whatever. This game is really unfair, as the other characters basically cheat. They get items without using item boxes, they have special abilities that you can't even use when you're the character. It's just like really unfair, like seriously unfair. All the tracks are also extremely simple, with the only obstacles being the corners and the other players. It also doesn't help that all the tracks are basically the same thing. As in, there's like four Mario circuits. Something else that doesn't help is the fact that Mario Circuit and Donut Plains look pretty identical. Anyway, you probably have been thinking this whole time, where, why are we in this room and not with the beanbag and all the other stuff? But this stupid thing keeps following me! Hey gamers! It's me. Now I know a little something about those silly old Christmas carols. We've all heard Jingle Bells, The First Noel, Do You Hear What I Hear, and Santa Claus is Coming to Town. But do you know the origin of these famous songs? That's why I'm here. I'm here to teach. I'm a teacher. I assume the idea behind this was that it was Santa, as in Santa Claus, as in Mr. Christmas, as in all the other names he has as a Mr. Coca-Cola. Now the most popular parody happens to be the worst song in the universe, known as Aussie Jingle Bells. Now I'm not going to read it out, but I can assure you, Aussie Jingle Bells is the worst song ever created by humankind and if I ever hear it again, I literally might murder someone. Well that's the story of some of these classic Christmas carols. And really, I'm telling you, Aussie Jingle Bells is really bad. 